Hey everybody, welcome to the first draft that I'll be covering in week three of Callus Draft League. And as tempting as it is to just cover Zoc every single week for the green team, I think it is only fair to once in a while mix it up and let some of the other guys on the team have some of the spotlight. So that's what we're going to do here, but certainly one of the better storylines is whether or not Zoc can remain undefeated in my draft formats throughout two tours so far so good hey the best way to keep track of that is by joining my discord server hint hint <clears throat> link in the description but in the meantime on the green team another really capable player that i think was good to begin with and is only getting better is 48 and it's whatever the french word is with its q u a r a n t e that's 40 in French, but I'm going to butcher the shit out of it. So as long as we know who it is, it's 48. That's who we're going to be covering. His opponent on the orange team, Blizziga, Blizziga. Uh, he was literally the last person selected in the draft. That certainly doesn't mean that he deserved to be or that he's the worst player in this by any means. In fact, in round one, he defeated the worst player in history in Jabba the Griffin. So, good on him. One and one record coming into this. But I have no clue who he is, and I don't think the captains did either. So that's how we got where we are. A little too much on the intro. I hope you guys remember the rules to this. Let's get into the action. 48 is on the left. He is our player one for purposes of this draft, and he kicks us off with a Skarmory ban, which is usually something banned by player two. But he must not intend to take it, obviously, or he would leave it open and grab it first pick. Metagross response, pretty standard. Metagross, one of the probably two Pokemon that people at this point have determined is the best in the format. Though it is interesting, I did create a tier list discussion section of my Discord server, and there's really not unanimous consensus i mean people can agree on some basic things but half a dozen people have submitted tier lists and boy oh boy are there some striking differences on those lists feel free to join in and submit your own accepting tier lists and viewpoints from anybody okay so 48 next ban titar and then final ban gengar which leaves open the usual suspects. Celebi, Snorlax, Aerodactyl, Regice, Salamence. I mean, Blissey, I guess, but I wouldn't first pick that. Pick your poison. And 48 decides, given the options available, that he wants to start us off with a Celebi. Fair enough. The response on the other side from Blizz is going to be to take the other two special walls. So those are obviously going to be contested as he takes both Bliss and Lax in one go. Makes me wonder if Regice is going to get picked earlier than it normally does, which I view it as a first round pick anyway. But, I mean, even more so after this happens, I think very much worth a look, that Regice pick. Nevertheless, it is back to 48, and he's not going to take Regice just yet. He's going to go... Salamence and what many would consider a pretty early fortress. Fortress over Starmie, fortress over some of the other power options here. Like I said, Zapdos, Aerodactyl. Skarm is banned, so perhaps Fori is just the best spiker right now by a good margin. I certainly think it is better in this format than it is in a team draft format. In the team draft format, there's only eight mons. You only play one game. You know it's coming. Super easy to load up on HP Fire and counter team it. It loses a lot of its effectiveness in that setup. In this, there's three games. It could come in any of the games. You don't know when it's coming. And it is much, much harder to load up against it. And it's really bad if you've got four HP Fires and you don't play against the Fory. And it's bad the other way as well. You don't want to do that because you don't want to get caught with your pants down. So you load up few or no HP fires, and then there it is. Kind of a bitch, kind of RNG. Certainly better in this format. A high-tier pick, in my opinion. On the flip side, we're going to see 
Swampert and Zapdos coming down for Blizz. Interesting that he prefers Swampert over Milotic into the Salamence, and a lot of people believe that Milotic is better in this format than Swampert to begin with. But perhaps Blizz is one of those people that does not see it that way and thinks that maybe Swampert is still better. And maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Jury's still out. But that's where we are for now, and that is going to leave my logic still open if that's something that interests 48. But he's going to take it a different way. He's going to go Starmie Jolteon, which I, I don't know that I'm thrilled about. The, the Starmie I can get behind because it is good against the Ments that he already has if you go like Bulky T-Wave Star. Shuts down a lot of ment sets. The other thing is if you are the 4A drafter, which he is, then obviously he wants to take the good spinners away from his opponent. So I can get behind the Starmie in that regard as well. But what I don't like about the Starmie and what I really don't like about the Jolteon in particular here is that we're very, very special heavy from 48's end. And there's the Bliss and the Lax on the other side. So as far as being offensive threats, the Starmie and the Jolteon I think are already going to have a very difficult time punching through, and that is without the fact that he's still left Regice floating, which, especially given these two picks that were just made, it would not shock me if Blizz were to pick that up here as well and put 48 in kind of a weird spot. Neither one is dead to rights. Starmie could still be, you know, bulky T-Wave recover spinner. It has a roll. Jolteon can pass substitute. Get out of there. They're not garbage into special walls, but they are much, much less effective. And I don't know about leaving things like Regice Arrow, my Lotic floating to take Jolteon here. Jolteon in particular, the Starmie, maybe. Good poke, I rated very highly. I don't know about the Jolteon here. It does not make a lot of sense to me into what Blizz has already taken. For me, that Jolteon would have been something else. Like I said, whether it is Regice, Aerodactyl, what have you. It wouldn't have been Jolteon here. So Blizz is going to take Claydol and Regice. These picks, given where we are, make sense. Regice is the third legitimate special wall here. And like I said, it's really going to make this very special heavy team of 48 have a hard time. And I think 48 should pivot pretty hard towards a more physical route. There are triple fighting weaknesses on the other side, granted, two fighting resists as well in the Zapdos and the Doll, but I think that 48 would be well served to go with a more physical approach. Really surprised that Aero Milo are still floating, but certainly, certainly, I would be grabbing one or both of those on the swing back if I'm 48. And then as far as the Doll, I mean, like I said, picking up a fighting weakness, which he's probably going to need given the rest of what he's got. Second rock weakness, good place to be, especially if you're passing back the Aerodactyl again, which he is. And then furthermore, 48 seems to be taking up the good spinners. So in order to not get too far behind in the Spiker Spinner War, here is a Claydol pick. So I think the Claydol Regice response is sensible. However, a little weird to give him Aerodactyl this late, and I'd be very surprised if he didn't take that. Like I said, for me, it would be Arrow Milotic here, but he sees it a different way, and he goes with Aerodactyl, which I'd be, like I said, shocked if that weren't taken. But instead of Milotic, he's going to opt for Heracross, actually, which I don't hate given the fighting weaknesses on the other side, and then one of those fighting resistances, the Claydol, is obviously not good against Terracross. You just get donk donked by Megahorn. But all that being said, I don't know. There's, there's multiple viable fighters, right? I mean, maybe Heracross is specifically the one that you want, given the Megahorn against the Claydol. But I don't know. Doesn't Metacham do the same thing? Aren't there other options? To me, the Heracross is more replaceable to me i still think it should have been my in that position and my very well may get banned now but this is what he went with so we will go from here and like i said i think 48 should definitely look into more physical threats given the amount of special walls on the other side so blizz certainly is picking up on the things that i'm talking about right now he sees the potential physical, specifically fighting weaknesses, even more specifically, 
fighters that can actually hit the Metacham, or, <laughs> well, I just gave away the pick, hit the Claydol meaningfully, and one such example is the Metacham here that he is going to ban out. That makes perfect sense, unlike something like Machamp that Claydol mostly covers. Obviously, any fighter can have HP Ghost or whatever, but Metacham is the most threatening one with that Shadow Ball and the potential to outspeed the Claydol as well. Certainly a poke if I were in Blizz's seat that I would probably not want to play against. 48 is going to take Moltres out of the fold. Hey, sure. I could take or leave the ban. I mean, there are multiple fire weaknesses. The Heracross, the Fori, the Salby. I don't know that 48's team as it sits is awful into Moltres, but... Will-O-Wisp is quite good in this. If you're going to allow moves like that to float around, then it takes you down a whole different path where you have to dra draft a bunch of uh, Heal Bell Pokemon and uh, maybe Rest and just, I don't know, Thick Fat. You just have to like go out of your way to check it. And yeah, I could see why you wouldn't want to play that way. I could see why you'd want to just build more natural, more organic teams and just take things that use Will-O-Wisp effectively out of play. So there you go. Moltres is not going to be here. Ah, here we go. My speech that I give every time. Here we go. It's a Doug Trio ban. Why? Why? Look at the team. Why? What are you worried about your opponent Doug Trioing? Uh, Blissey? Sure. Not even the most reliable thing by any means. It's going to be Sandless because Tara's banned. You can possibly live two EQs if you're bold. Get them with Ice Beam, whatever. But like Blissey, kind of. Not Lax. Not Swampert. Not Zapdos. Not Claydol. A Sleeping Regice, I, I guess. Normal Regice will just stab Ice Beam, one hit KO you. Why are we banning Dugtrio? What are you worried about if you're Blizz? What is Dugtrio coming in and trapping where you go, oh, fuck, that's devastating. I can't let that happen. It does not make any sense to me. If anything, the Dug Trio is probably better against 48 with the Starmie, with the Celebi, with the Heracross, and you've got Zapdos to pass to it. If anything, you might look to take Dug Trio down the line, but this does not make sense to me whatsoever as a ban. I don't get it. I don't like it. Dug Trio blows. Have you heard that before? I feel like I've said that a time or two. So, uh, 48 is going to take out Alakazam, and I think the thought process here is he's not going to probably take too many dedicated special threats like Zam, like Raikou, like Sceptile, whatever, because they're not that good into his opponent, but they might still be good against him. So he's removing something that he knows that he's not going to take, but that he still doesn't really want his opponent to have. So therefore, Alakazam is going to get the boot. Fine and well. Weird to me that my low tick made it to round two. I do not think that's happened very often in this tournament or just in this format in general. And certainly he's going to immediately jump on that with his opening picks, taking Regirock and Milo. Interesting that he takes Regirock when Registeel, often considered better, is available. But Regirock does make sense given the circumstances, obviously against Mence and Arrow, a real threat. And that's pretty much the gist. It's not fantastic against the rest of this, but if you're trying to pad against those specific mons, there you go. Mission accomplished. And the Milotic, like I said, very surprised that it somehow made it to round two. That really doesn't happen very often, but a later than it should be Milotic for sure, in my view. So great pickup there. Great value grabbing the Milotic at this stage. My one criticism, I think, of Blizz's team is that it's very, very slow. Zapdos aside... Very slow, fat team over here. And certainly he's going to be on the defensive in most matchups. But his Mons quality is very high. And his picks, for the most part, make a lot of sense. So, not clear who's winning right now. Couple weird choices, for sure, in my opinion, for both sides. But we're in a decent place. And, like I said, it's too early to venture a prediction. But I can understand what Blizz is doing here, without a doubt. And I, I like where it's going, as long as he doesn't end up with teams that are so crazy slow that he's just on the back foot perpetually, which is probably the plan for 48. He very well may end up taking some more fast mons. But for now, going to grab the remaining Reggie to not let his opponent have the Triforce. 
and then he's going to get Blaze again as well, which, again, very well may be a little bit of a defensive element to that as well. Uh, same concept as, like, banning Alakazam or whatever. Is Blaze again the number one fighter against his opponent? No, it's not bad by any means, but he super duper doesn't want to play against it. Registeel, Salaby, Fori, Heracross, none of these things fans of Blaze again. So, especially while he's taking the Registeel pick, it makes sense that he would take this with it. I think 48 is pretty heads up and clearly understands where he is in the draft. And yeah. I can get on board with these picks. No objection. Blizz here. Wasn't expecting these picks necessarily, but he's going to go with Cloyster Raikou. Sure. I mean, it's a way to speed things up a little bit, which he definitely needs to do. And as we've discussed, the special wall advantage clearly is going to belong all draft long with Blizz. So, yeah, might as well take special threats while they're available. Raikou, I think, is a great pickup, and... I mean, 48 isn't dead in the water to it, but he's not great against it by any means. There's quite a few of these mons that would not be thrilled to be staring down a Raikou, that's for sure. And then the Cloyster's good as well. He's going to pick up his second spinner, his first spiker. That's going to leave them actually exactly the same. Two spinners, one spiker each. So he's not conceding in that regard. Not too worried about a lot of Cloyster's weaknesses. He's got multiple rock resists. He's got electric resist, gra grass resist, what have you. So Cloyster, I don't think, is a huge liability. Probably bulkier than it normally would be because there's not going to be any sand. I'm down. Uh, I think Blizz is really drafting well. Not drafting like someone who was picked as the last player in this tournament. And it should go to show you that pick orders don't really matter for these things. Not like managers are ever perfect. Not like we ever really know how good some of these guys are. And the dude certainly seems to know how to draft. Certainly isn't doing anything wrong as far as this observer can tell on the flip side of that we're gonna see venusaur and also gyrados i'm down with the venusaur i'm down with grass types in general here i mean against the swampert and the milo and i mean venusaur in particular with a sleep move there are many 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 things on this team for blizz that are slower than the venusaur and that are vulnerable to sleep powder so no objection to that pick I think, again, very heads-up pick. Makes a lot of sense. It'll also maybe help against the double electric that Blizz now has. Uh, Gyarados is fine. Obviously not ideal into Zapdos, but he can only use the Zapdos once. Against a lot of this other stuff, it is a legitimate threat. And you certainly don't want your opponent to take it, because Gyarados, I think, is pretty good against 48. So I feel like a lot of the picks that 48 has been making recently have been both of the mind... I don't want my opponent to have this because it's pretty good against me, but it's still a pretty good poke in general, just anyway, even if it isn't like the stone cold nuts against my opponent. The nuts is a poker term for those of you who don't play. Anyhow, it is going to be, this is also possibly a bit defensive minded. So he's going to go with Steelix and Charizard here. Yeah, I like it. If you're going to grab the second electric here, the Raikou, then uh, I definitely support grabbing the Steelix. You're not only going to protect both of your electrics here, but you're also going to target the Jolteon as a defensive wall and then target the Aerodactyl defensively as well. Uh, Blizz is really drafting well, in my opinion. I These picks, I mean, they both are, truly. This is. I'm glad I picked this one. I didn't look at the draft at all beforehand. I just wanted to pick a draft that was done with the green team involved that didn't involve Zakaru, so I could spread the love around. But, yeah, as this is playing out, these guys are both pretty good fucking drafters, it seems. And, and that makes it that much more entertaining for me, who's a nerd and is really genuinely fascinated by the draft strategies in this. As far as the Charizard, same concept. I mean, there's just multiple fire weaknesses. Salaby, Registeel, Fori, Heracross, Venusaur now. Uh, fire types seem good. Uh, 48 has done a good job of denying several of them, banning the Moltres, taking the Blaze again. There's only so many more left. Arcanine, perhaps, sometime in our future. But, yeah, Fire seems good in the matchup. Totally fine with those picks as well. Wrapping up round two for 48, Hariyama, a Pokemon that many people view as round one pickable. So getting it at the very end of round two, 
bargain as far as I'm concerned. And we've already discussed why fighters would be good into Blizz. And if anything, they've only gotten better into Blizz. He already had the Blissey Lax Regice fighting weaknesses, but now add to that the Regirock Cloister Steelix fighting weaknesses. Fighter's definitely where you want to be, and I wouldn't even be surprised if down the road if you picked up another fighter, though the good ones are starting to get thin. I still think somebody like Machamp could be worth a look, given where we are in this draft. And Sceptile, the same concept here, maybe not as good as Venusaur since it doesn't have Sleep Powder, but Fast Grass Attacker could potentially be obnoxious against Blizz, and likewise doesn't want to play against that Mon for the reasons that we've repeatedly talked about here, the lack of good special walls to deal with the Mon himself. And then wrapping up round two in its entirety here, Weezing, another defensive-oriented pick, and Dragonite. I can see why, as the lax drafter, you don't want to play against Weezing. Furthermore, with now three fighters on the other side, the Heracross, the Hariyama, not so good against the Blaze again because of Fire Blast, but multiple fighters on the other side, Weezing almost certainly going to make a team and get some value, and it's reasonably good against Mence and Arrow as well. Uh, Dragonite, the greatest Pokemon ever. Love it at the end of round two. Really good value. I think you save it for game two, game three. You customize it, and it'll do whatever you need it to do. Also, these are both fighting resistances, which is much needed since we have six fighting weaknesses now on Blizz's team. So picking up legitimate resistances, not Charizard kind of resistances that just get blown out of the water by Rock Slide, but real resistances in Weezing and Dragonite with a lot more bulk to them and are not fucked by Rock Slide, that will certainly help the matter against the fighters on the other side. So now we go to the third and final round of bans, starting with Mr. 48. And he decides Flygon will not participate in this particular match. On the other side for Blizz, he is going to remove Machamp. Certainly, even though his opponent has three fighters, clearly still worried about it. And I really don't hate that ban. I really, truly don't. I think Machamp very well may have been in the cards down the road for 48. I don't know what the next best fighter is. We might finally be done, but clearly both players agree that Blizz has a bit of a fighting weakness, even though he has shored that up a little bit with some of these recent picks that do, in fact, resist it. So 48 is going to go with Jinx. Interesting that he bans that rather than tries to take it. I think taking it immediately in round three would have been perfectly viable as well, but it's the same deal. He might just not think that special attackers are that good into his opponent's team, but he himself doesn't want to play against it. Therefore, the answer, get rid of it. And Jinx has been a consistent overperformer in this format. The more we go, the better it seems to be. Uh, maybe Jinx is the real deal. It certainly consistently gets wins and performs at a higher level than where it's picked. At least that's been the case up to now. And another fighting ban for Blizz. That is the last premier fighter, probably. It, uh... Yeah, he's obviously concerned about it. He spent three of his bans, Metacham, Machamp, Breloom on fighters, and then his opponent picked Triple Fighter on the other side. So, rare to have a draft end up where you have zero fighters, but I think that is where we're going with this. I don't... What fighter is left for Blizz to pick up if he even wants one? Not that I think fighters are great against this draft, against Celebi, Salamence, Starmie, Venusaur, Gyarados. They're not so hot against 48. He's pretty damn padded against them, but doesn't want to play against them and has spent half of his bans making sure as few of them are, as possible are there. But that being said, like I said, 48 did manage to get three of them anyway. So now we go to the third and final round, and 48 kicks us off with my man, Glalie, and also Umbreon. Another spiker added to the arsenal, so that's now two spikers, two spinners in total for 48. We'll see if that prompts Blizz to take whatever spinner he prefers, Dawn Fan, Blastoise, whoever, or if he's content with the two spinners that he's got. And then Umbreon, I mean, uh, yeah, something vaguely resembling a special wall, just cobbling something together. There's no Gengar or anything on the other side. It's not because it's a 
super duper good pursuit user. You don't even really have anything that you want to pursuit. It is simply trying to get something resembling a special wall. And given the slim pickings available, I guess Umbreon will have to do. Well, Blizz is going to take a spinner, but not the one that I thought that he would take. Enter the Tenta. And also going to take a late Vaporeon. Round 3 Vaporeon. Pretty good value. Picking up another bulky water for his squad. He now has three. Swampert, Milotic, Vaporeon. Can have one on each team if he so chooses. Like I said, surprised that Tenta thought that like Blastoise or Dawn Fan or whatever would get picked over it. But Tenta it is. I don't hate it. Uh, Tenta's probably a lot better in this than it is in other formats. Certainly than it would be in OU. I think Tenta could have merit, so jury's still out, but open mind, I think Tenta very well may actually make a team, and I don't think it's terrible. So here is, I guess, part of why he took the Umbreon. I guess he's planning ahead to make this pick. We're going to go double Ghost here, neither of which is Zokaru's beloved Sableye. It's instead going to be the double Ghost Mystery Bus Dustclops pick, now with Umbreon off the table. So the question becomes, does Blizz respond with Houndoom now, depending on the level to which he's worried about these ghosts? Right now, he's got nothing even close to being able to pursue these things away. Not that there are very many good pursuit users in ADV to begin with, so it'll be very telling on his turn. It's either Houndoom now, or I'm not really that fucking concerned about those. And the answer is... Not that concerned. Granted, I would have taken Houndoom over these janky picks. I think Olmastar sucks all the D. Not a fan of that poke at all. But nevertheless, Olmastar Ludicolos, we've picked four waters in a row. Picks up a Swift Swimmer, picks up a kind of sort of special wall, and picks up the crappiest, most vulnerable spiker there has ever been in Olmastar. It is double Swift Swim user, though, so he might not be viewing it as a spiker. He might be viewing it as an offensive threat. I'm curious if he adds Kingdra to the mix at some point and is really committing to this Swift Swim nonsense, but not an Star guy myself. For me, I mean, fire types are pretty good against 48 anyway, and he just took Mystery Vest Dusclops. For me, certainly Houndoom would have been picked in there somewhere, at least over the Star. I don't know if I would have taken the Ludi or not, but one of those picks, without a doubt, would have been Houndoom if it were me. Nevertheless, going around to the other side. What is this pick? Haven't seen this guy. Typhlosion, huh? Getting spicy. And Smeargle, a spiker. So that makes it basically official. I mean, he doesn't have to bring the Smeargle. But most likely, 48 is going to opt for a spiker on all three teams. The Fori, the Glalie, the Smeargle, respectively. Now, granted, he's doing that into an opponent who already has three spinners. So, maybe it's not the nuts. But then again, he did just take Double Ghost to block those spinners. It's the back and forth of Pokemon. Who knows? The Typhlosion pick? No clue. Not a damn clue. I don't think it'll get played. I don't think Typhlosion is a good Mon. I don't think Typhlosion is fantastic into uh, Vaporeon, Milotic, Swampert, various other things on the other side. But it's still super cool to see. I don't think it's been picked at all in this format prior to now. Now it has. Can't wait to see it. Probably not in action. On the other side. Better late than never. Would have taken this before, but he's going to take it now. Scooby-Doom. Don't know about Slake King. I mean, aside from the fact that he's adding another fighting weakness and that there's double ghost on the other side, so, like, that automatically is, like, eh. I just don't think Slake King is all that good. Maybe it's a little bit better in this. It certainly is better in this than it would be in the other format where the opponent knows it's coming and can just load up on protects and make it absolute garbage. But I'm still skeptical that Slay King is all that good in this. And it doesn't really seem to fit on what is mostly defensive or at least balanced teams for Blizz. Whereas Slay King, I think, would be on a pretty dedicated offense. I don't think that'll end up getting played. But again, haven't had a lot of Slay King picks. So, cool to see him make a cameo. See if he ends up doing anything. 
And 48 with some funky picks here. He's going to go double fighter. So he, we have gone deep down the fighter depth chart. All six of the standard ones. And now Polyrath and Hitmonlee entering the fold as well. Uh, Hitmonlee isn't good at it, but it does have rapid spin if he decides that that's important. But just for fighter attackers, here are two more of them. Polyrath and Hitmonlee. I don't think either of those pokes are all that good, but... You know, if you really truly believe in that fighting weakness, of which Blizz has added three more fighting weaknesses in this third round, the Omastar, the Houndoom, the Slaking, granted with Tentacruel who resists it, but still three more fighting weaknesses on top of all those weaknesses he already had, I guess this is going to be the punishment, and with Polyrath in particular, if Blizz had any fancy ideas about Swift Swim, Omastar, Ludicolo, whatever... Polyrath does have Water Absorb. Not that that helps him against the grass part of Ludicolo, but just saying. And then this last pick I don't actually think is even in the sheet. When I had my wife make this, I had her not include most NFEs, not fully evolved, because I didn't think most of them would get picked. I guess there is a hypothetical world. We did already see somebody pick Haunter in one of these. Uh, Matang has been discussed, but I don't know if it's ever been picked. Uh, the pick here, like I said, I don't even think it's here. Yeah, the pick here is Kadabra. So, we'll just do Alakazam. And you guys will remember, because Alakazam is banned. But I'll just have you guys remember that it's not an Alakazam. It's just Alakazam Jr., Alakazam's son, nephew, whatever. It's a Kadabra. And to be honest with you, I don't know offhand how Kadabra's stats compare to Alakazam. I mean, lower, worse, obviously, but to what extent? I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, maybe if it's only like a smidge lower, if it's just like a Chansey to Blissey level downgrade, then like, maybe, I guess. It probably won't end up getting played, but there's been a lot of firsts in this. Haven't seen a lot of Typhlosion, haven't seen a lot of Slaking, I don't think we've ever seen Kadabra. Not a lot of Polyrath, not a lot of Hitmonlee. Definitely some new stuff and some variety at the end. Kind of janky round threes, honestly, for, for both players. Some of the stuff that didn't get picked, like, where is Arcanine right now? I rate that guy much higher than, like... This whole board and this whole board. Where is my boy Arcanine? Clifford the Big Red Dog. And I'm sure there's other ones as well. But that's just an immediate thing that comes to my mind of stuff that didn't get picked in a world where Hitmonlee and Typhlosion and Kadabra are getting picked. But that's the beauty. They can, they can pick whatever they want. Anyhow, uh, all that aside, that's our draft. So... What do we think? Um, well, they have very different kinds of teams. It's very much going to be a back and forth here. Like I said, 48 is like super duper harping on the fighting weaknesses, going so far as to take these shitters, Polyrath and Hitmonlee. Not sure if either of those end up making the cut, but there are a lot of fighting weaknesses on the other side. I don't think this should get decided by the Spiker Spinner War. They both have... Enough spinners. There's only one actual spiker for Bli or Sorry, two. He picked up the Omastar. So three spikers over here on the left, two on the right. I, I guess they could play that game, but they both came prepared. They both have enough spinners to make it probably not the deciding factor here. I guess it's going to come down to if you think 48 gets it done with... His fighters, or if you think that Blizz is going to get it done with his special attackers, which I don't know that he necessarily went hard enough down that rabbit hole. He did a great job early on establishing all those special walls, but I would have liked to have seen him push that a little further. I'm not clear why he's not the one who took Septile or things along those lines. I'm not clear why he didn't take Espeon or whatever, which is almost certainly better than Kadabra now that I think about it. I'm not sure why he didn't go down that route a little bit more, but yeah, I mean, the special weakness is there for 48. It might not be absolutely egregious. I mean, between Umbreon, Registeel Celebi, and just 
fast stuff to like check stuff and revenge stuff. Maybe, maybe he's got enough, but yeah, I don't know that Blizz necessarily did enough to punish it. I think in like the first round or the first round and a half, while it was close, I might have leaned the way of Blizz, but I don't know that I necessarily feel that way anymore. I think that whether it's people rushing to get done or whether it's it's more nuanced and it's not as much just like copy something that you saw in another draft, I think that round three is often where drafts kind of fall apart and where inexperience starts to shine through and it gets a little bit wonky. Like I said, I don't know that I love the round three picks for either player, and I don't feel like either of them wound up with as strong of a draft as it initially looked to me like it may, like they may have. But that being said, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing predictions a different way because. If I were predict like if I were to predict player versus player, I would have to factor in the the player skill, which in a lot of these cases I'm not able to do because I just don't know one or both of the guys well enough. 48, I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on where he stands as an ADVer, and I think he's pretty good. Uh, Blizz, I really have no idea. Watched him play two games of Pokemon ever, so I don't know. But rather than making assumptions about people's level of skill i'm going to do it this way i'm going to say if i could have one of these squads or the other would i rather be the player on the left or the player on the right assuming all the skill and all those things are equal who would i rather be and i think i personally would rather be the drafter on the right i I, I don't feel that he has, like, a tremendous advantage and is, like, blatantly outdrafted 48 is going to crush him. I think this is one of the closer ones that we've seen, and I don't feel confident making any prediction. I think it can go either way. But if I'm just picking for myself, would I rather have all the Mons on the left or all the Mons on the right? I guess that I personally would rather have the Mons on the right. So I guess in that way, taking player skill out of it, I will go with Blizz, even though 48 is probably the better Pokemon player. So, that's it. Let me know what you guys think. Comments are always welcome. I'm off to the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate you guys being here.